G'day and welcome to the guide video for the Makerverse Nano Power Timer. This module will periodically switch on a load such as a microcontroller, and in this video we'll be using it to make a low power data logger with a Raspberry Pi Pico. While most microcontrollers will run off batteries for hours or days, the Nano Power Timer can push this out to days or weeks or even months. It does this by completely powering off the microcontroller when not in use and periodically switching it back on again. Let's get started with the guide. Power is connected to the Nano Power Timer either via a battery connector or a 2.54 millimeter pin header, and it will then periodically switch on to output power pins in order to enable a microcontroller to switch on, sample some data, record it to a file, and then tell the Nano Power Timer that it can be switched off. The DUN or DNE input pin on the Nano Power Timer will switch off the microcontroller when a high signal is received. The row of dip switches on the Nano Power Timer set the delay between microcontroller power ons. The time delay set for each individual dip switch is written on the back of the Nano Power Timer, or you can check out the guide for the full list of different combinations that you can achieve. For this example, we're going to switch on every switch between A and E, and that will set a 2.2 second period. Let's get started building the actual data logger. We have a Raspberry Pi Pico on a breadboard and a potentiometer connected to one of its ADC pins. The data logger will measure the voltage on this ADC and write it to a log file. In order to do the wiring for this project, we need to make four connections. Firstly, we'll do a connection from the nano power timer's minus outs pin to the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Next, we're gonna make a connection from the out plus pin to the V sys pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico. The next connection is gonna be the DNE or done pin. We're gonna go from GP15 on the Raspberry Pi Pico to the DNE input on the nano power timer. Lastly, we'll connect a three AAA battery pack to the battery connector on the nano power timer. In order to get our code onto the Raspberry Pi Pico, we'll connect a micro USB connector to a PC and then load the code onto it through Thony. If you haven't used Thony to program a Raspberry Pi Pico before, you can check out our guide to do just that. Inside Thony, we're going to paste our code that we got from the guide and then save it as main.py. It's important to save it as main.py because that's the file that's run automatically when the Raspberry Pi Pico is switched on. Let's have a look at how this code works. We import the pin and ADC modules, then we define our done pin so that the Raspberry Pi Pico can tell the nano power timer that it's finished writing data and it can be switched off. Next, we define our analog to digital converter. We take an analog to digital converter reading, and then this blob of code opens up a file on the Raspberry Pi Pico's file system, writes our ADC reading, writes a new line, and then does a flush and a close. The flush and the close there are just there to make sure that it's absolutely certain that all of the data we're writing to the file has been physically written to the file. Because the next line of code turns on the done pin and hard powers off the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now that main.py is definitely saved to the Raspberry Pi Pico, we can unplug it, switch on the battery, and we will see the nano power timer's light periodically flash. Because the logger is periodically reading the analog to digital converter, we can turn this potentiometer all the way down, and then wait a few seconds, and then slowly turn it up, and we will see this data change in the log file. Now that we've had the logger running for a while, we're gonna turn the battery off, plug it back into the PC, and we'll open up the log file and see what we've got. With Thony back open, we can press the stop button just so it reconnects to the Pico. Then we'll see log.txt in the file list. Double clicking this, we'll open it, and you can see all the ADC samples that have been recorded. Towards the bottom of the log, we see a zero, then a 6,000, then slowly back up to the maximum value. These data points were recorded as the potentiometer was being rotated. We hope that this simple project has given you some great ideas for your own projects. If you make something cool or just have a question, please leave a comment on the article for this video. 